Well, this just in Virginia men's basketball coach Tony Bennett officially stepped down today. The 55 year old says the game is not in a healthy place with big changes sweeping across the sport. But he also says there is still a pathway forward. Here is what some of what he had to say earlier today about the change that needs to happen in college basketball. The game and college athletics is not in a healthy spot. It's not, and there needs to be change, and it's not going to go back. I think I was equipped to do the job here the old way, and there's, that's who I am, and that's how it was, and my staff has buoyed me along to get to this point, but there needs to be change. It's going to be a closer to a professional model, <laughs> Coach Carlisle, I think it is, where there's got to be collective bargaining. There has to be a restriction on the salary pool, pool that teams can spend. There has to be transfer regulation restrictions. Um, there has to be some limits on the agent involvement to these young guys. Um, and there are good agents and there are bad agents, and they're driving some of this stuff that we're in. And, and I worry a lot about the mental health of the student athletes as all this stuff comes down. And it's sometimes when you're in it, you have to step away, and maybe I can be an advocate for the, the student athletes and the coaches to, to get the changes. But this is a place that will not compromise and do it the right way. And I wish I could, it could be me, but it can't. Um, and when you know in your heart it's the time, you have to give it away. Mm -hmm. For more on this, let's go ahead and welcome in college basketball analyst Matt Norlander for more. Matt, it is great to see you. I first want to start with, I hear, I hear that you had a chance to speak with Coach Bennett earlier. What were your biggest takeaways from that conversation? Yeah, I spoke with Tony for about 25 minutes after his press conference just to get a little bit more from from him and, and further understand his timeline and why he why he did this and uh the biggest thing is that he he's he just didn't feel as though he could do the job the way he wanted to do it with 100 percent of himself invested and so i spoke with tony and his wife laurel they went on, you know, a two day getaway last weekend. They left on Saturday. They came back on Monday. And uh, as Tony explained it to me, he found himself really crystallizing where he was in his career, where the sport was. And he's a big man of faith. And so he is being guided by a feeling on this that if he's not going to be able to give all of himself to this job, if it's 98% instead of 100%, then that is not fair to the profession, to Virginia, to his players. So he didn't come to this lightly, although he did come to it quickly uh, to a certain extent, Jordan, because he told me like, he really did consider doing this in April, but before he could even have enough time to really realize if he should, like the portal picked up. And the next thing you know, he's involved in dozens of conversations with prospective Virginia basketball players that are looking to transfer. And he started feeling better about it. But as he crept up here on the on the start of the season, he just couldn't, uh, he could not shake the feeling that uh, this job was no longer his to hold and to continue to do so would be to cheat the spirit of, of the honor that was bestowed upon him for the past 15 years here in Charlottesville. Well, I definitely, I want to dive deeper here into that timeline that you just brought up. And it's good to hear that, you know, obviously it wasn't an easy decision for him. A lot of people with so much praise for Coach Bennett saying he is a class act because he absolutely is. But what is your take for those frustrated with this decision? The timeline of when it came right before the season. This is, uh, you know, a guy who recruited a bunch of players to come play for him. Guys transferred to come play for Coach Bennett. What is your take on that? A couple things here. I mean, as I talk to you right now, uh, Virginia is getting ready to start a men's basketball practice in less than an hour. And Ron Sanchez will run that practice. Tony Bennett, I believe, has left John Paul Jones Arena. Um, and it's uh, it's an interesting atmosphere here. I directly asked Tony about this because it is a fair question, and he did not run from, from the nature of that question. Uh, basically, the timeline was he decided on Monday. He informed his athletic director on Tuesday. She said, listen, go to bed. Go do everything tomorrow. Go through practice. Make sure... And he did all of that, and he still felt a little tug. And he's not ignorant or, in, uh, or unaware of the fact that the timing isn't great. But the words he used to me were he felt 
something like a war waging inside of himself and he didn't like that feeling and he didn't want to continue doing that for the next five months because I, I said, Tony, the biggest reason why you're doing this are the stresses and the realities that have come into the sport that exist primarily between, you know, the start of April and, and the end of September. And now you can actually coach your team. And he said, that's true to an extent, but it's not like we still wouldn't be recruiting and aren't still recruiting uh, you know, future, you know, high school players that will be future freshmen here and, you know, very well that, you know, once you get a couple couple months into the season, like stuff with the portal already gets humming there. So he just did not, it did not sit well with him, the idea that he would have had these thoughts and would have kept them private to himself, knowing full well he would have retired. Uh, he thought this was the more honest way to go about it as opposed to gutting through when he knew that his heart was not in it the way that he wants it to be but it is not he's he's doing this because he believes that he has been driven to this decision uh through the forces that are happening in the sport that he doesn't fully agree with and to have continued knowing that he was still fighting a battle that he did that didn't sit well with him uh he thought this was the more honest way to go about uh choosing to retire instead of privately keeping this to himself and his wife for five months and letting us all know in March of 2025. Yeah, not an easy decision, I'm sure, whenever it would be announced. Uh, well, like it or not, this is a move that's going to affect the players who are right behind you gearing up to go practice, gearing up for the season. Um, you mentioned Ron Sanchez. He will be taking over for Coach Bennett, leading this Virginia basketball program. Um, what does this team look with, like, uh, um, with Sanchez at the helm? Because we do know this was expected. Yeah, listen, Sanchez, yeah, he was the, once once the news came down in relatively surprising fashion, mm -hmm. Jordan, obviously, on Thursday, uh, the expectation then was that Ron Sanchez, who has been a head coach, he coached at Charlotte before he, uh, he was, he was a longtime assistant for, for Tony Bennett here at Virginia, then he took the job at Charlotte, and then he came back a year ago uh, to resume his role here on staff, and he is the acting head coach. I actually did talk to Tony about, about that process. He said, uh, it was my dream whenever my retirement were to come, you know, I, whenever that was to have one of uh, my assistants eventually take that take that role. And so here we have it moving forward. It's 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 going to be an intriguing year because Virginia with Tony Bennett, I think you could have made a case because of how good he has been and how reliable Virginia has been, uh, could have been a top three level team potentially in the ACC. But without him and now with Sanchez and the uncertainty there and, you know, there are just there's there are players that have to define themselves. This is a, a fairly uh, interesting Virginia team because there's not a lot of defined roles like Blake Buchanan is the name that I'll toss out there that I think could be a, a really good second year player. But we just don't know how these pieces will fit. And now while the DNA of the program will still be with Tony Bennett and his style, as Tony said during his press conference, you know, Ron and and you know the top assistant Jason Williford like they they're going to have their own twists on this and I think there is more uncertainty here with Virginia. I think Virginia's spectrum of results for the season ahead is pretty wide. I think that I think uh the best case scenario for their ceiling is probably third place in the ACC and then frankly in a in a very intriguing but 18 school ACC uh we can't say that without Tony Bennett there like there's the potential that Virginia doesn't make the tournament. It could be a ninth or 10th or 11th place team in the ACC. We just don't know. So it provides a compelling storyline, but there is a lot of uncertainty there. And we wait and see if Virginia can have some of the short-term success that UConn and North Carolina previously experienced when Dean Smith did this in 1997 to set up Bill Guthridge. And then Jim Calhoun did this and Kevin Ollie got the job uh, at, at UConn here. This is, situation is not an exact parallel but uh, but there's a lot of there's obviously a lot of uncertainty. And oh, by the way, they're playing a scrimmage in this building, a close scrimmage against VCU on Saturday. Mm. And as uh, <laughs> as ironic as it is, VCU is coached by Ryan Odom. Ryan Odom was the coach of UMBC when UMBC became the first 16 to beat a one over Virginia in 2018. Of course, Tony Bennett, his ultimate legacy is going from losing that game to a year later 
guiding Virginia to its first national championship in 2019. Well, with this news of Tony Bennett stepping down, Virginia now goes from the, having the fifth best odds to win the ACC to the eighth best odds at this moment. So we will wait and see as we get ready for the season. You know, this is just news that shook up college basketball, drawing reaction from players, coaches, former legends as well. This is what Jim Beheim had to say about Tony Bennett retiring. He said, quote, we lost one of our great coaches coaches solely because of the landscape that is college basketball. Our leadership has to stop focusing on how much money we can make and find a way to get the student athletes on board with an answer for NIL. You know, Matt, do you think this won't be the last time we see a coach step down due to the landscape of the game right now? Yeah, no, this will not be the last time. Uh, this now continues to pattern, obviously. Now, some coaches like Roy Williams, Mike Krzyzewski, Jim Beheim, they were, uh, you know, they were after the age of 70. Uh, in the case of Krzyzewski and Beheim, uh, well past the age of 70. So, you know, we, we could see the, the retirement coming over the horizon there. But Jay Wright retired in shocking fashion, obviously, the way that he did it after the season. Now you have Tony Bennett. There are questions on how much longer Tom Izzo will do it. So until there are parameters around the sport if they even come that uh make it easier for these coaches to manage their programs and not make it a 24 hour a day practically a kind of job 365 days a year mm -hmm. I, I think this is going to be inevitable and i've heard this jordan i've heard this for a couple of years now uh it's just the fact of the matter is that once you get to the level of coaching at the in the power conferences and you are afforded contracts that pay you better now than ever in the history of the sport once these coaches accrue uh, significant wealth, you know, tens of millions of dollars, and they are set for life. Uh, the idea that we're going to have Hall of Fame level coaches coaching to the age of 70 will be a rarity. It's still out there. Rick Pitino has been revitalized. He's still going at St. John's. I mentioned Izzo. He's told me on the record that he doesn't foresee himself retiring anytime soon. But then again, you see something like Bennett. I can guarantee you Tom Izzo sees that, and it has an impact on his situation, no doubt about it. Uh, I do think that we will see more, and we just kind of brace for who the next one might be. But it's been a string of them. Championship winning coaches retiring. Ben is not just the latest. He's also mm -hmm. the youngest at 55 years old. Yeah. Uh, what a career. Regardless, it has been for Tony Bennett. You know, it hurts for all parties involved, especially those players. But the best decision for him and his family moving forward in college basketball will certainly miss him. Matt Norlander joining us here as it is official. Tony Bennett has retired as a head coach for the Virginia basketball program here more from matt on the ion college basketball podcast they will be talking about this i'm sure for weeks to come and the impact it'll have on the acc but also specifically the virginia basketball program as the season gets geared up scan and cue that qr code on your screen to watch or listen now